Hey everybody, here's my pseudo unboxing of a Stoger STR9MC. Is this a viable budget micro compact carry or backup gun? Uh, hopefully we will find that out. But more importantly, I'm going to discuss possible magazine interchangeability, compatibility, possible holsters, uh, ammo selection, uh, I'm able to do stuff like this because Federal has recently sent me some ammunition. And um, so I want to get into the size comparison both on paper and in real world as we compare the newish Stoger STR9MC, the MC for Micro Compact. It's thinner than the others. Micro Compact versus the Ruger Max 9 and the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. So what is it? Well, it's a micro compact pistol, but it has very good ergos. We will show that and talk about that. It's very budget priced. This basic version uh, comes with two magazines, an 11 rounder and a 13 rounder. Other options might be available for 10 round magazines. There's a uh, higher end option that would have a front night sight plus a third magazine would be the difference. And, um, so this has a black serrated rear, which I like a lot, and a front white dot. I'll probably drop some orange paint in there. It looks like it is meant to shift different clicks and lock down for typical right-hand shooters that shoot to the left. Uh, so that's interesting that it goes this direction for most of the world that is right-handed that is going to shoot for the left, and you can lock it down there. So interesting kind of design on the rear sight. It does have good si uh, slide serrations. Hopefully you can see that in the lighting. I do have loaded magazines and there's a reason for that, uh, but empty chambers on all the firearms. I won't pull the trigger until the magazine is out. There's the short mag in there and you can compare it to the Ruger Max 9 Pro and to the Shield Plus. It's very similar to the Max 9. Uh, the Shield Plus is, of course, a little heavier and a little taller, and height might matter, especially if you're thinking about pocket carry in something like this Nemesis number 13. Oh, it looks like it will fit in there just fine, or something like a Mika's pocket holster. So there you go. Um... As I said, the magazines are loaded. We are empty. Okay. Magazines are loaded uh, because they're very hard to load. Luckily, it does come with this loader. And before I take it to the range, I wanted magazines to be fully compressed. Um, you got I had to push on the table and push down on the lift to get leverage. There we go. And uh, load those magazines up. That is why they are loaded. Okay. So there is good grip texture and there's higher grip texture for your strong hand thumb, which I really, really, really like. It feels good in the hand. It is thin. We will go over on paper, usable slide stop slide release. Unlike the Shield Plus who's well broken in and I still can't do that uh, on the Shield Plus if there's no magazine in, the Ruger will uh, as well. Um, it beats out both of them on both sides of the pistol. You do got a memory or accelerator cut place for your second hand thumb, which really helps in recoil mitigation in such a light pistol. This will probably be a bit snappy. It's only 18 and a half ounces. Um, you can see a little chamber hole if you're lucky enough to have a flashlight and see see inside unless you're using nickel plated brass like on the HSTs. Um, so very good in the hand. There's just a very, very small bump, but that finds your middle finger in there for the undercut. Again, we are loaded. So let's look at the trigger. There's a trigger dingus, just like the other pistols, a trigger dingus. It won't go unless the dingus is pressed. It is a plastic trigger though, it looks like. Here, again, it's a budget option. One more verification. Budget option, take up hard wall. Take up to a, a little bit of take up only, to a hard wall. And then a very solid break with a power assisted, nice, short 
reset. So this has a very good trigger. Now this is a little heavy. The one that um, was in the store case, the trigger poundage was probably about three quarters of a pound less after it's been pulled by a bunch of people. Um, but it does say, uh, warns about excessive dry fire practice with this. Um, I want to point that out in the manual. So this is a budget pistol. That is something to be aware of. It also warns of using a lot of plus P or plus P plus ammunition. So that is interesting. Does that mean I'm not going to function test some plus P? No, or I'm probably just going to use the wonderful punch that works good from barrel length. So let's talk about barrel length. 3.29 or 3.27, I've seen it listed both. So basically a 3.3 inch barrel, which the Shield and Shield Plus only has a 3.1 inch barrel. The Max 9 has a 3.2 inch barrel. So if the barrel is of halfway decent tolerances, um, you would hopefully get a little more velocity from the 3.3 inch barrel, which will give you full hollow point expansion. Again, with nine millimeters, you gotta be very careful in under three and a half inch barrels. So all these new micro nines uh, on the market, you really need to worry about ammo selection. And that's where very importantly, the HST and the punch come in. Come in. Look at my own ballistic, ballistics testing of these, the HST over here, 124 grain HST, and the 124 grain punch, which is a little more budget friendly and yet excellent good uniform expansion penetration. I even got official numbers from Federal just yesterday from Chris Locke, the handgun product manager, and they tested it recently from a Glock 43 that has a 3.4 inch barrel through heavy clothing, 14.6 inches of penetration, and this is real organic gel, not that clear ballistics BS. 14.6 inches of penetration in organic calibrated gelatin heavy clothing with 0 0.605 expansion. Uh, the punch also seems to be getting better velocity on my chrono, which I'm not sure of. Um, and in other testers as well from short, like 3.2 inch barrels. So the punch is probably what I'll actually load in it because it's getting a little bit better velocity than the HST, though the HST is slightly more expansion. So either way, you're good to go for your micro needs, guys. Please get a 124 pun uh, punch, a 124 HST or 124 plus HST because other ammunition isn't going to give full uniform expansion, um, especially when hitting, um, partially on bones like a rib or sternum. All right, let's look at the paper statistics as far as measurement. Sorry about the shadow. Can't really do a whole lot about that. We got 6.1 inches with the, the flat magazine in height. Uh, I'm sorry, in length, which is the same as the Shield Plus and just a tiny bit longer than the Max 9. But the height, it's way more efficient from its height to capacity. So for a backup gun or possibly a pocket gun, that might be very beneficial to you. 4.25 inches versus 4.52 with the Max 9, uh, which would only be 10 plus 1. This is 11 plus 1, more efficient with a quarter inch less height. 4.6 with a shield, which would I believe that's the measurement with the flat base at only 10 plus 1. So we get another round of capacity with a lot less height, so it's more efficient. The width, it is the least... In width, especially at the slide, it's a very narrow slide, 0.94 versus 0.95 versus 1.1 on paper specs from Handgun Hero. 18.5 ounces versus 18.4 versus 20.2 versus uh, mine's more because I got steel night sights on it um, and optics plate, so I think mine's a bit more. And so as far as barrel length for hollow point expansion and height and width, it is very, very uh, efficient. Now, when I got, I did break the calipers out, you can see right here. And in different areas, there are different things. Uh, the, the, you know, the measure to the controls in all of them are actually different than what's on paper. If you measure at the top of the kind of where the web of your hand goes, I like this. It's actually a little thicker than the Shield Plus, whereas the Shield bows and rounds and is actually thicker down two-thirds of the way down, which you're going to feel in the meat in your palm, but it's a little thinner up here. Now, they all feel good in the hand, but the Shield does not have an accelerator cut, and my thumb does fly up in recoil, even though I can shoot this very well, very rapid, etc., but I've thought about putting some grip tape 
uh, right there, but then it comes off in Kydex holsters and you'll get a little wear on your slide. Um, so I actually haven't done that yet, though other pistols, I have done it. So here's the Ruger Max 9. It's way closer in size to the Ruger Max 9, if that gives you guys a good comparison. Okay, it seems to be a little thinner, I think, in the grip overall. It feels good in the grip. Again, I like the memory pads. Um, there seems good place, even if I had a thin glove on for my trigger finger. But height, it is not as tall. Okay, and seems like we have pretty low bore axis to where my thumb goes. And the slide doesn't look as tall into the top of the sights. If that's how you're measuring, it really makes a difference. Okay, let's compare it to Ruger Max 9. Clear trigger, dingus, take up, and a little mushy to a click. Um, I do like the Max 9 a lot. I think it's a better micro than people give it credit for. I've even shot it at 25 yards, 5A zone, comparing to a full size with a great trigger. Uh, I don't like that there is a pin you have to take out. This is in a good size where I would like that has easy, easy Glock style tab takedowns. That's kind of important to me because there's also the Masada Slim that is fairly similar here that has a 3.4 uh, inch barrel. Um, between the, the micro and the macros, uh, but it too has um, a pin that has to come out. And I don't like that because you can lose that. So that's one reason I decided to pick this up and because I want to be able to show you guys what might be a decent uh, budget uh, option. Let me put the 10 round or 11 round mag in. Sorry, a lot of a lot of them say 10, but this is actually 11 round magazine. It actually feels pretty good as a pinky dangler. If I needed to in a pocket, that feels actually pretty good to me and a little bit better than the shield with the flat mag in there. So again, it's efficient for its size. Now with a 13 round magazine. I get two thirds of my pinky on it. I wear an XL glove. I don't have really long fingers, but I do have big meat grappling hands. Get my combative street jiu-jitsu instructional on BJJ Fanatics. It's the highest rated uh, self-defense instructional out there on the biggest site, BJJ Fanatics. Combatives and street jiu-jitsu. I have four black belts, fought pro, and work at armed security. I've also done firearms training through a SWAT school and other things. So anyway, guys, that gives me a good, firm, full hand. So pocket, I might go with the smaller mag uh, in, you know, carried probably appendix because it's so thin. I would carry with this mag and or, and again, pretty good, useful serrations to press check on us outlaw style. It did, ha did have a very strong spring. I actually haven't cleaned it in oil yet. I need to do that before I go to the range, but I've hand racked a hundred plus times. Always do that, especially with European guns that are made for 124 NATO, higher pressure, higher velocity rounds than PUD 115 American and preload your magazines. And I'm hoping we don't have any trouble. I think I have uh, uh, PPU or something in here and I got Federal 124 American Eagle in there. We'll start that out. Then I'll start using the Federal Awesome Syntec rounds. You can see me use in other videos. Thank you, Federal. And then I'll probably, I think because of the barrel length, um, based on the data I've collected, I think I'm going to go with the punch. And I just got the real, real data from Chris Locke at Federal, I mean, heavy clothing, and it's from a similar barrel length, 3.4 inch, heavy clothing, 14.6 inches penetration with 0.605 expansion. That's pretty awesome for a short barreled uh, 9mm, guys, quite frankly. So I think it's a good looking pistol. Um, someone else, you know, if you got a 226 mag, um, you might want to try that as well. So ergonomically, I am not chambering around, ergonomically, I like it. I like it a lot. It's a little thicker up top uh, than the Shield Plus, and I actually kind of like that. And the P365, the regular version, is too thin here, where if I get a grip, it's not a good master grip. Uh, this seems to do it for me. I'm not chamber loaded. 
Again, now let's talk about holsters. We already talked about the DeSantis Nemesis number 13. That feels pretty good. Mika's pocket holster. Don Hume. I don't know what this was made for. Don Hume. Throw it in there. I am now at the point comfortable with something like this or a Shield Plus in there. Um, as long as you know you're not planning on going for a swim, even though it's leather and you need to be careful about that, especially if you're in like swamp ass, hot and wet areas. You might want to be a little more careful about that. Now, there is a couple companies on Amazon that make holsters for it. One seems better than the other. I emailed them. I have not gotten a response, unfortunately. Um, black something or shadow something or web something. I forget what it's called. This, however, is my Shield Plus from Crossbreed. Is this called the Rogue? I forget. I did a review of this, and it fits very solidly with a very... Solid click in there, and that's a loaded mag, and it's it's not coming out. So um, that is a potential option, though legally, I'm definitely not telling you to do that. But there are specific some specific holsters out there for the newish STR9 MC. So guys, if you want to see my range review of just this, and then a comparison video versus the others, and I might get like another micro macro. Um, if you guys like this kind of thing, please get in the comments and show that you do. Help fight the algorithm monster. Help me out. And um, anyway, guys, we'll see if this is a fairly uh, decent budget option. Of course, the unboxing, other than the loader and that, and the two mags, that's about it. And it looks like an airsoft box and cover, quite frankly, just like you would find in all of the continent of Asia, all over from different companies. Um, so yeah, the box isn't great, but it's a box. And, um, oh, this will also take magazines. I checked it at the range to make sure, not just hearsay off the internet, from the bigger STR9 series. Even though those are wider grip frames, wider pistols, uh, those magazines do fit, lock in, and I'm sure function fine. So if you got a regular STR9C compact or your full size or the combats or any of the others, um, those mags, I don't know if you can buy those separately, um, but maybe you want to pick up uh, one of those if it turns out you like this. But I'm very, very happy about that. And fairly high texturing for the thumb and easy takedown. That's better than a lot of companies are doing in the micro, especially budget micro territory. So hopefully you liked the review. Get in the comments. Let me know if you have any experience with Stoker because it's my first one. And we'll take it to the range and see how it goes. Thanks, everybody. Kaboom. And subscribe to my new channel as kind of a backup just for the ballistics info, Ballistics Jail. Subscribe to Ballistics Jail and Dan the Wolfman and get my competitive street jiu-jitsu instructional on BJJ Fanatics.